All right, so none of this uh, plate that I cut off is really important, being as how I'm going to replace this whole bottom piece. But I figured if I could cut it off really nice or close to flush, it's less grinding for when I install this piece here. Now these cuts aren't the straightest in the world, uh, but they'll work, right? Especially if I have a, a, a root opening or to say a backer plate. So I'll straighten out this little curve here and um, put the backer plate, put that piece there, and that'll be stitched up for now and so <clears throat> at that point I'll be able to focus on cutting the bottom piece off I think I'm gonna go about four inches or so past this weld joint before I or so I can cut this other piece um, and then go straight across same thing over here and that way there's not too much weld uh, joints in one spot offset it about that far uh, fortunately this top one is offset by over a foot which is good and uh, so at least the bottom will have the same not so much stress is built up in just one area all right it's looking good tell in the cut here this half the tip was dirty I stopped the, the cut there something got it in the tip and it got dirty right in there so uh, now I got to bevel this side and the opposite side Nothing a grinder can't fix. Close enough. That's a 37.8 degree angle right there. I calculated it. I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> Cool. 
heck of a gap in there, but I'm going to be putting back in place. So it'll be a really good, uh, got about, that looks to be about, maybe five sixteenths or more, uh, which is fine, I guess. It's enough well, a little hole. All right, let me get those uh, back in place. That's why they call it stick welding. Sticks. Okay, so while the gap is a little inconsistent, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I can grind that as I'm straightening that out, it'll be fine. The same thing here, that looks good. That's about as close as, I'm sorry, as far that way as I could do it. It's kind of a pain. And this one was a little bit better off. So, uh, eh, about 5 sixteenths, yeah, so. It is what it is, and it will work. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be torching straight down, and I will be cutting into the bottom plate here. And I will be able, I will angle the torch in just a little bit so that I can see that I have to see the separation line between this plate and that plate. And then I will make a cut towards the center. And I measured from the bore edge to a specified mark over there. Same on the opposite side. I check these to the center bores where the uh, lift cylinders are, and they're very square. So. I can trust that that's eh, close enough. I mean, uh, even at that, it's gonna have a backing plate so you can adjust a little bit here and there. So that's pretty close. So I'll make that cut, kind of angle that torch cut in so that I can see it from the inside. And then I'll make the cut across to the other side. You see here, look real closely, you can see the separation line. I'm trying to hold the camera and get my pliers at the same time. Right in there, there's a separation line, which would be nice. Uh, very similar to that separation line. So now I would run the torch underneath, make it to the inside, mark a line. Cut across. All right, so now I'm at the point of um, cutting this piece out right here, right there. 
And one of the things I like to consider is the uh, grain structure of the plate. Now I really don't know if it makes a difference, but you know, on when you try and bend a flat bar in one direction, it works great. But on the other direction, it tends to crack or tear. Well, I have similar thoughts on that with plate material. So as I laid this out, I uh, put arrows here to show the direction of what I think the grain is running. So hopefully uh, it'll be a little bit stronger that way than if they were running this way. So that's just a little tidbit of information there. I'm not sure how scientific it is, but that's just what runs through my mind because I think a flat bar and a very similar process with plate. All right, time to cut this thing. Okay, so this plate is going on okay. Um, got a little bit of a gap there, which is good. And right here. It's pretty good. Got a little bit of a gap. Gap right in there, no problem. Squeeze that down. Had more gap on this side. Looks like this plate was a little bit warped. And looking at that plate over there, you can tell it is a little bit bowed. It was bowed from the beginning. But either way, no biggie. Can just squeeze that down a little bit. Make it touch. It's got about a, a strong eighth. But other than that, it's okay. Looking good. Uh, here with these angles or diagonals right here. I like to cut those last. That way it matches up perfectly. There's no messing around or fighting trying to shove it here and there and try to get it exactly right. So I'll just come up here about four or five inches. I forget exactly what it is. Maybe about three inches. And then continue that line this way and so whatever this line uh, says here at this point run a straight edge along it and just continue that this way and cut that cut that in it will look factory factory as Derek says <laughs> um, vice grip garage by the way anyway so things are looking good I will go ahead and tack this in place and like I mentioned I think I mentioned before I usually like doing the bottom first but in this case I won't be able to so I'll tackle this. I might weld it up, but I actually need to start on this piece now. And that, that'll actually probably be a different video. So it'll be a combined. You'll see this one not completed as I'm working on that one. Because uh, once I get that done, then I can break free the little tacks that are holding it in place here. And then roll this on its side to weld all the things from the underneath side. So. I'd like to do it overhead and I'd like to show off doing it overhead, right? All, all processes, all positions, right? But when it's something important like this, if you can turn it around, it's best to turn it around. So I will. Uh, okay, looking good. Couple tack tacks and keep moving.
I mentioned in the last video that I'd be finishing or working on this section here before I completed the the tail end of it so that I could roll this whole unit as one at one time you know as I need to turn it around and finish out welding it so here I am starting on this guy this guy's had some pretty serious cracks right in here and pretty nasty welds I don't know what they were trying to do but I mean hey they're trying to keep it going so it is what it is uh, right in this area there's a baffle an internal baffle that's in there I'm not sure you can see it but there's some distortion right in here right in here that you can see where the welds are on the inside of the baffle and so my thoughts are to <clears throat> cut this section out and restart or remake the whole new side plate customer provided material so that'll be fine uh, this up here will have a little radius to it and I should be able to bend it on my little press brake just little little steps at a time either that or just clamp it down really good I'm sorry about that plane going by oh <laughs> it's way up there and uh, so that'll be next I'll be cutting these sides off uh, finishing this up this side here yeah it looks like they didn't even try to grind into it or nothing um, and from the looks of it here this surface looks like it bulged out like it's not flat uh, it's not uh, right okay so I guess we'll get started and see how much we can tear apart so I just burned the paint off in this area where I'm gonna be cutting it's kind of a big patch and uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that the you can feel from the weld on the inside that this is where the interior baffle is and so I'm gonna make just a, a cut right along these areas nothing nothing precise nothing critical because I'm gonna make a, a patch or a pattern uh, to lay over it again and I'll mark lines but at least I'll be able to or mark new lines actually and then at least I'll be able to get an idea of what's in there or what's going on. And I got some poster board. I'll lay the poster board up top, hammer against this edge, you know, uh, like a hammer fit. And it'll cut that poster board, same thing along the bottom. And then I'll be able to push it up against it just so long as it overlaps the cut area. And I can just uh, mark a new line and then trim it up a little bit more precisely that way. So now I am going to cut this and it's not going to be pretty because you know, there's an awful lot of weld in this area here, and it's probably going to have a lot of cracks, a lot of stops and starts, because, you know, torches don't like uh, cracked areas, and it's hard to keep going. And then getting around this this baffle piece, so uh, it, it, won't, it most likely won't fall out, so I'll probably have to cut this section out, then this section out, and then trim off the, the excess weld and things off of that after I do the top. So lots to do still. Uh, again, I still haven't finished this, but it's getting there. And, you know, nothing to it but to do it. So here we go.
look what I found from the factory. Can't really see it, uh, maybe so well, but they put in a small piece because this plate right here was short, almost like if they did this in there. So that caused this stress crack along that stress riser right there in that corner. And it cracked all the way up. And it comes through on this side. That is crazy. Yeah, so stress riser right there. Crack from that corner straight up. Cause it to crack up here. Incredible. As I mentioned before. Oh, uh, rain's coming. This piece. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. This piece was broken in there. Uh, okay, I gotta go. Rain's coming. So, uh, anyway, I'll cut the other side later. Oh, that put a damper on thing. Man, oh man. My little rain gutter didn't work so well. Golly. Well, all right, well, I guess we're gonna have to pause on that. I'll see you guys after a while.